Hi, everyone. Uh, so this is our second uh, lecture on the creation of the modern vampire. And uh, this time, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about Romanian vampires. So we've looked at the idea of vampire-like creatures all over the world. Let's actually dig in and talk about the Western vampire and how it came to be. Uh, again, if you haven't done a deep dive into vampire lore, you probably think of famous movie vampires like Count Dracula, Edward Cullen, or Count Orlok from Nosferatu. Uh, let's be clear, you might even be thinking of this guy. Uh, but how do we get to, like, a chocolate cereal vampire? How is a creature like that so universal that we can have that level of cultural familiarity with it? Well, the Western vampire, as we know it, probably originates in medieval Romania. Uh, the word has a Serbo-Croatian origin in the word upir, which means to drink. You also probably get the word uh, nosferatu from the Romanian word nesuferitu, or necuratu, which means the intolerable one uh, and unclean spirit, uh, respectively. Uh, in the last video, uh, we said that a lot of vampiric creatures have things in common with witches or sorcerers. And the Western Vampire is probably an offshoot of the Romanian legend of the Strigoi, which is a troubled spirit that rises from the grave to torment the living. You can also uh, find the origins of the Strigoi in the Greco-Roman legend of the Strix, uh, which is a witchcraft-practicing owl-like spirit that drinks blood at night. Um, in Romanian myth, uh, the vampire is a witch or uh, some pr uh, practitioner of black magic, uh, not necessarily female. Uh, they do bad things in life, killing children, talking to the devil, cursing their neighbors. And when they die, they have to be buried upside down in their coffins so that when they try to crawl out, they just end up burrowing deeper and deeper into the earth. Uh, they uh, apparently aren't that smart when they first wake up. But if they do get out, they're usually sort of gaunt and hairy with long claws. A lot of people think this might be a trait that they gain uh, because of the myth that hair and fingernails uh, continue to grow after we die. They don't. It's just that as our bodies desiccate, the skin around our nails pulls back, and so nails look longer. Um, anyway, the Romanian vampire is uh, squat and hairy and has claws and sometimes can turn into dangerous forest animals like wolves. In fact, uh, the vampire and the werewolf are originally the same creature. <laughs> so all those lawsuits that Anne Rice filed against White Wolf role-playing and uh, the Underworld movies really doesn't acknowledge the actual mythological history. So I guess, take that, Anne Rice. But also, thank you for Interview with the Vampire. It's a mixed bag. Also, the medieval Iranian vampire is bright red and kind of rotund because it's full of blood, like a mosquito. Um, a lot of the myths of how to kill vampires come from standard Romanian folk magic that has to do with purity. Uh, in some myths, uh, vampires can be killed when they get impaled with a stake made of holly or hawthorn, two kinds of wood considered to be pure or holy. Likewise, you can kill them with holy water or a purifying fire, because fire is always purifying. They're uh, repulsed by garlic, because garlic is a healing herb in a lot of traditional medicine. They can't cross running water because it is fresh and pure. In general, you kill a Romanian vampire by using uncorrupted implements, since they are fundamentally corrupt. The vampires, that is, fundamentally corrupt. So, how do we get from the Romanian vampire, short, squat, hairy, filled with blood, the soul of corruption, to the movie vampire, who is pale and beautiful and seductive? The answer is, well, two guys. <laughs> Vlad the Impaler, and then later, Bram Stoker. Now, we're going to get into the publishing history of vampire novels in the next video, so we'll have to leave off on Bram Stoker for the time being. But the one thing you need to know is that he bases Count Dracula off of Vlad the Impaler, so suddenly this Romanian warlord is really important to thinking about uh, monsters in general and vampires in particular. So... Vlad the Impaler is the nickname for uh, Vlad Sepesh uh, III, a 15th century prince from a tiny country in what is now Romania called uh, Wallachia. Um, incidentally, uh, Wallachia is right next door to a Romanian region called Transylvania. Uh, 
So when uh, Stoker did the research for his novel, he got the geography very slightly wrong. Um, at any rate, uh, Vlad's father, uh, Vlad Sepesh II, was part of a military order called the Order of the Dragon uh, that was dedicated to keeping the Muslim Ottoman Empire out of Christian Europe. Uh, Wallachia was very close to the border of the Ottoman Empire in the 15th century. Uh, in fact, sometimes it was part of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so it was a really important place uh, to defend, right? It's also right on the border of um, what we would think of now as the, 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 the Near East or the Middle East and Europe. It's, um, it's this, this sort of borderland between cultures, between places. And if you were part of uh, Christendom, part of uh, Europe, in the uh, in the 14th century, you sort of thought of um, Wallachia um, and and Transylvania, I suppose, and uh, you know other other places in what is now Romania as the very very edge of the Christian world. Um, that wasn't actually true, but that's how people thought of it uh, because of you know uh, religious intolerance and a general sort of lack of understanding of history. Anyway, um, all of that is to say uh, that this was an important place to defend. And Vlad Sepesh II was a great warrior in the order. They called him uh, Vlad Dracul, which means Vlad the Dragon. Uh, his son, Vlad Sepesh III, therefore, was called Vlad Draculia, or Vlad the Dragon's son. So, if you've ever watched uh, Game of Thrones, you probably have an idea of what a political ward is. Uh, when a king or an emperor wants to keep a lord from rebelling against him, he sometimes takes the lord's kids and holds them for safekeeping. Really, it's a threat. If you try to fight me, I will kill your kids. Uh, that's what happens to Vlad the Impaler. Uh, so, we have um, Vlad uh, Dracul uh, being forced to swear fealty uh, to the sultan of the Ottoman Empire, uh, Murad II. Um, and uh, so Vlad Dracul's two sons... Uh, Vlad Draculia and uh, Radu the Handsome were kept as uh, prisoners, right? So uh, you can see here that between the two of them, we've got this like borderland here with the empire, like I was talking about. Um, so eventually, uh, when his uh, uh, dad and uh, older brother die, uh, Vlad Draculia, Vlad the Second, Vlad the Impaler, uh, becomes uh, the prince or uh, voivoda. Uh, which literally means a uh, war master of Wallachia. Um, and uh, Vlad uh, swears an oath uh, to serve the Ottoman Empire, but he deeply, deeply resents them. That's probably because he grew up as their, as their prisoner. Just, uh, you know, a thought. Um, so he's constantly rebelling. And after he uh, rebels, um, you know, a number of times against uh, the Sultan, um, he earns his nickname Vlad the Impaler because, well, because uh, he was kind of a monstrous sociopath who was famous for his cruelty. Uh, I don't want to get into too many details, but as you can probably guess, uh, he impaled a lot of people on spikes. Uh, there's an account of the Ottoman Sultan um, Mehmed II, uh, Murad II's son, uh, and Vlad's kind of foster brother fucked up, uh, marching towards the Wallachian capital, uh, Targoviste, and thinking that they discovered a forest, but as they get closer, it was actually 20,000 Turkish soldiers impaled on spikes in concentric circles. So, you know, that's the kind of guy he was. He also uh, nailed the turbans of uh, uh, Turkish ambassadors to their heads uh, because they refused to take them off in his presence, and then he beheaded them and threw the heads back at them. Uh, you know, he boiled people alive. Uh, seriously, if you want to know more, uh, you can definitely find out more about it, but it's gross, monstrous stuff. Vlad the Impaler is a gross, monstrous guy. Um, he is actually, though, also the Romanian national hero, um, because he defended Romania against, against the Ottoman Empire, so <sighs> history is full of really, really shitty guys getting really great attention for killing other shitty guys. Anyway, um, that's a whole other conversation. Um, so, between the Romanian vampire and Vlad Draculia, we have the basis for our modern conception of vampires. But it's still not quite there. Uh, how does Vlad the Impaler, former child soldier and disembowelment fan, turn into Count Dracula? Well, in order to understand that, 
we're going to need to go into the literary history of vampire novels, which will be in the next video. So looking forward to seeing you guys there.